S O S S. Spotlight the behavior. What that means is you're going to be very direct and shine all of the light right on them because we can do things in the dark that we could never do when the lights are on. For example, when I go to the movies, I go to the movies for the sole purpose of taking a nap. But before my nap, I I always get the biggest tub of popcorn that I possibly can, get extra butter, and I will snarf that down before the movie even starts. I would never do that with the lights on. Why? Because I'm a victim of body shaming, I guess, like everybody else. For example, let's say that somebody body shames you at the dinner table. In an upcoming lesson, I talk about body shaming. Body shaming can be done in three different ways, generally. There are many different ways to body shame somebody or body shame ourselves. But the three most common ways of body shaming are going to be people talking about you, you know, saying something like, you're really going to eat that. Another common way that we body shame others is when we body shame ourselves in front of others. Oh, God, I'm so full. Oh, God, I'm so fat. Oh, I'm so fat. Oh, my God, I've got cankles. You know, or the third most common way is people body shame other people when they are with us, which is, in essence, body shaming themselves, you, and the other person. You know, it could be something like, Oh, my God, did you see? See, that is... That is why I always say fat people should not wear all one color. It makes them look like the fruit that's associated with that color. Oh my gosh, she's like a walking crab apple. So let's say that you're at the dinner table and somebody does that. And you think, I've had enough body shaming. I am made up of 100% love. I'm a reflection of my father. What's not to love about that? Excuse me? Nothing. I'm sick of that. And so I'm going to stand up for it. What are the right words? Remember, S-O-S, -S, spotlight the behavior. So I want to shine light on this, all right? So number one, shine the light on it, which means I'm going to turn to you, face you, make sure that my head stays forward and does not tilt to the side, make direct eye contact, and use your name. And it sounds like this. Michelle, that comment that you just made about my cousin, that's called body shaming. So I've called it out. You know, that's one of the benefits of tactical communication. When you start learning what things are called, you can call them out. Remember that when you don't know the name of something, just like in the fairy tales, when you don't know that that little man, his name is Rumpelstiltskin, he has the power. And he can do all sorts of things. You can jump up and down, he screams and yells, no one can get rid of him, he steals people's babies. But once you say, oh, your name is Rumpelstiltskin, 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 poof, he's gone, Okay. We want to be able to name things. The more you can name things, that is what's called passive aggressive behavior. That is what's called sniping. Once you can do that, you have much more power than the people who cannot or simply engage in it and don't even know what it's called. Number two, you want to oppose that behavior. You want to disengage. You want to reject it. It could sound something very simple like, I'm really making an effort to reject body shaming in all of its forms, both at work, at home, at school, with my kids, anywhere I see it. And that's why I'm calling you out on it. All right? And then, number three, state your intention. Stating your intention sounds like, I'm going to tell you what I do. For example, instead of body shaming, I could say something like, you know, instead of body shaming somebody, especially when they're not around to defend themselves, I think we should all support one another, especially when we are brave enough to take fashion risks, as Mary was obviously doing when she uh, maybe, unfortunately, decided to don a monochromatic holiday getup and that may or may not have given someone the opportunity, albeit unfortunate opportunity, to then dehumanize her by equating her with a holiday fruit, as you just did. And now when somebody says something like, oh, I, you know what, I just didn't mean to go, I was just making a joke, I was just, do not say things like, I know it's okay. You know, it's, it's, it's okay. I get, don't say that. Just a simple, I understand. Because you do understand. You know, I understand. And if you can take control like that, call someone out on their behavior. Tell them you do not engage in that and oppose it. And state what your intention is instead. Everything changes. Because people think, whoa, whoa. They are now on alert. You have put people on alert. I'm going to call you on that behavior. And I'm going to do it without, by the way, as you notice, insulting them, without engaging in anything else, without judging them. I focused simply on their behavior, not them. I didn't say, hey, jerk face, don't judge my cousin when she's not in the room and can't defend herself. You look like a banana, by the way. You know, I don't do that. I'm simply saying, oh, I'm calling you on that behavior because I'm sure that you're not aware you're engaging in it. I have not yet set the rules of engagement with you. I have not laid out the protocol. So I'm going to take this opportunity to do so. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. And let's make it a festivus for the rest of us, okay? Now, basically, to put it in a nice, simple template, you can just say something simple like, 
John, what you just did there, that's called blank. And I reject that. I prefer to blankety blank. That's it. It's simple. Now imagine if you had those words every place you went. I mean, imagine how would your life change if every time you walked into work or you walked into a family situation or you walked into a, a bar, wherever you meet people, if you always were confident that you would have the right words no matter what, no matter who, no matter where, if you always had the right words, how would your life change? If you want to find that out, check out my advanced resources at danoconnertraining.com, and they're all on sale till the end of the year. So there is still time to take advantage of that. Make sure to click on the link in the description below. Or let's say that somebody says something about your partner who's not there. You know, you have a significant other, apart from all of the old when you get married, when you're having babies, all of that stuff, somebody just decides to make a comment such as, you know, over the holiday season, you only see them once a year, and this is why they say something such as, So Dan, where's your little friend? I'm going to again. Be honest, direct, call them out, and first spotlight that behavior. See, John, John, what you just did there, when you referred to my spouse as my little friend, that's called passive aggressive behavior when you use a diminutive label to refer to somebody that's important to me. I think that's in poor taste, and that's why I'm deciding not to answer your question about where my spouse is. Now, I prefer, instead of using passive-aggressive communication, to be frank with you and tell you if I have a problem with you or with anyone else in this family, as I'm doing now. John, could you pass some of that pumpkin pie down there? It'll help me get the bitter taste out of my mouth. That you put there, John. Or let's say, for example, I got a letter from a subscriber. And now, by the way, if you have a specific situation that you're dealing with, please let me know what it is in the comments below. And I will try to answer it in one of these videos, as I'm about to do now, using a comment that I just got in one of my recent videos, where there's this poor woman dealing with her mother-in-law. And I know not all mother-in-laws are bad, by the way. And in my family, I've been blessed by seeing wonderful mother-in-law relationships all my life. But a lot of us really struggle with that. Like this subscriber who said that her mother-in-law is deliberately being divisive and trying to separate her from her spouse and makes no bones about that. So let's say that you're at the holiday table and you're a woman and you're there with your husband and the mother-in-law who's also there says something like, It's time for dessert. All right, honey, which would you like? Would you like some of my delicious pineapple upside down cake? Or would you like some of the pecan pie that your wife made? You know, one of those types of things. And now the poor guy is put on the spot having to decide between his mother-in-law's and his wife's dessert. If that's you, if you were the subscriber who wrote that, Try something like this. Spotlight the behavior. Wait, Mark, Mary, Mark, before you respond, I'm not comfortable with you making that type of decision because I think what's really going on here is that you're not being asked to choose between two desserts. You're being asked to choose between two people and I don't want to put you in that situation. I'm just not comfortable with it. Simple. You know, all you have to do is say what's going on there. Now, I didn't judge the mother-in-law. I did not say, your mom is making you choose between the two of us. Mm -mm. You're being put in that situation. Use the passive voice. That's honest. I think what's really going on here is what I'm saying is that you're being asked to choose between two people, not two desserts. And then I'm saying the truth. I'm just not comfortable with that. When you're not comfortable with some behavior, say that. You don't need to think of a you know grand excuse. You don't need to think of powerful words. You can always tell people, you know, I think what's really going on here is a form of cheating. I think what's really going on here is a form of intimidation. I think what's going on here is somebody's being ganged up on, and I'm not comfortable with that. Simple. And number two, remember, I have to oppose that behavior, reject it, withdraw from it, disconnect from it, which I can do by simply saying something such as, I want everybody here to be comfortable and enjoy the holidays without having to do things like decide between one person or one thing and another. There are enough desserts and people and love for everybody. Simple. You know, I'd I'd much rather that Mark enjoy his evening than enjoy my pecan pie. Because later on, he can enjoy all the pie he wants. Then I have to state my intention. Say something that we're going to do. I've just said what I'm opposed to. What are we going to do? You know what I'd love to do? I would love to save my pie until tomorrow. Then I can scarf it all down without having to look like a pig in front of anybody else. Oh, that's body shaming. Sorry, Teresa. I'm going to be easy and then I'd have the whole pie to myself. Does that work for everybody here? You know, if people push it, remember... If you are prepared with your strategy, if you have just said perfectly good words, why would I want to waste my holiday breath finding any new words? I don't need to engage with you anymore. I have just said what your behavior is, that I oppose it, and what I choose to do instead. I don't need to think of anything else. I'm done. I can just sit here and enjoy this beautiful pineapple upside down cake. And if your mother-in-law decides to say anything like, Oh, no, no. I want everybody to enjoy it. Mark, which one would you choose? 
I've just said how I feel about it, so I can just repeat that if I want to and use the broken record as I eat my delicious pineapple upside down cake. Well, again, you know, I think, Mark, I don't want you to have to choose between people or desserts. And I think, you know, you're being asked really to choose between people. And that's divisive. And I just want everybody here to enjoy the holidays. So let's save my pie for later. Really, let's do that. And you can enjoy all the pie you want once we get home. Nope. No, really, I'm going to save mine for later. Mmm, this is delicious, Trixie. You know, don't think of new stuff. Use the broken record. So there you go. A simple SOS. If it's the holidays especially, I hope that wherever you are, you're with people that you love. And I hope that you tell them that. I can love you and love myself and get all my needs met all at the same time. It just takes a little bit of practice. But together we can do it and we can raise this global dialogue one conversation at a time. So this is Dan O'Connor. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you again next time. The tactical communication skills that you'll learn here will equip you with the right words to walk into any situation and hold your own when up against the most powerful communicators without having to sit through years of boring communication skills training courses. And check out my website where you can get a free communication starter kit. You can find a link to that in the description below or the info card above.